Major support for The 10 is brought to you by Protocase, builders of electronic enclosures for scientists, engineers, and innovators. The Cape Breton Partnership and the Cape Breton Regional Municipality. 45 Drives, experts in large storage. And Navigate Startup House. The 10 is produced by Navigate Startup House. Yeah, so my name is Sean Green. I'm uh, President and CEO of VMP Group. Uh, we're based in Sydney. Um, I'm here to talk a little bit about the work that we've been doing in virtual reality for the last couple of years. We, um, we've done a lot of things over the last 25 years, but um, over the last couple of years, we've established a division that focuses on uh, virtual reality applications and augmented reality applications. So, um, I don't know if everybody here has had to try virtual reality or have experienced VR, but um, for those that haven't, it, um, it's a very cool experience. Um, it's an immersive digital experience that surrounds you with um, 360 degree um, uh, digital three-dimensional uh, space. And once you're in that space, you can interact with it, you can uh, move around in it. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty incredible experience and it's one of those things that you can't really describe. You have to really try it to truly appreciate what it can, what it can bring. Um, it's, for your, it's used in the tons and tons of different applications uh, in research, uh, safety, training, uh, the military, uh, education, medicine, and uh, some of the things that I'll be chatting about uh, in the next few minutes. So, um, we started off and actually started working in VR when we, uh, when we founded in 19... a <laughs> long time ago. Um, and there were some key problems that were facing the VR space. Um, and, uh, in addition to all of the, the technological challenges, there were some kind of human components uh, that really uh, needed to be overcome to create a seamless and enjoyable human experience. Uh, one of them was the resolution, the, the, the quality, the, oh, just the general quality of the picture. They were using these displays, and in old days it was the CRTs, miniature CRTs that were located very, very close to your eyes. They weren't very sharp, they were kind of blurry. Uh, the resolution wasn't very good. So that was a big one, that they had to really sharpen up those displays, and that's largely by uh, the evolution of mobile phones and how they can now densely pack these really, really sharp images and uh, in the, in displays into these small devices. Um, another big one was the frame rate. So the human eye can um, detect changes in frame rates to up to and beyond 150 frames per second. So that's, they can kind of distinctly uh, understand up to 150 frame, uh, pictures, individual moving pictures per second. Um, when it comes to VR, that's, that's a really high number. Um, but through research, they just, they decided that an acceptable threshold, so the minimum number of frames is about 90, uh, which to the eye, to the human eye, or the average human, images look smooth and they move um, uh, freely and there's no jitter or stuttering in those images as, uh, uh, at 90 frames plus. Um, latency was another big one, and latency is really this the delay that it takes for somebody to interact with something on a, um, an in, or within an interactive experience. And uh, so if you press a button or try to open a door or move your head, that latency is the lag between the actual action and how it gets uh, displayed in your eyes. And um, that lag, if it goes beyond 50 milliseconds, your brain picks it up and can make people dizzy and um, in some cases throw up. <laughs> So um, 50 milliseconds or better is the way to go, and that is uh, one, uh, what is it, one two hundredth of a second. And then finally, these things had to be comfortable. Um, the big ones in the early days were very clunky, very heavy, very uncomfortable. They couldn't be worn for extended periods of time. So here's a quick timeline um, after uh, VR was bailed in the mid-90s. Um, and its resurgence happened very, very quickly. Starting in 2012, uh, a company called Oculus VR, they <clears throat> uh, Kickstarter campaign to raise some money to develop this technology that they had been working on. Um, within a year, they managed enough money to 
um, to, to release their first uh, development kit to uh, developers and uh, content um, like, like us. Uh, and the second How's that? This is complicated. I should know how to do this. Okay. Um, uh, it's like the iPhone 4. Just don't hold, don't hold it that way. Um, so, well, where was I? Uh, so, 2014, we released um, the second one, and another company called uh, AC started to. Um, announced that they were involved in development uh, of a competing platform. So uh, that little bit of extra competition that created some innovation and some very, very cool um, screen tests and technology tests that they had been working on. So that really caught our attention. And so after 20 years, um, we felt that the technology was at a point where we could possibly start delivering uh, experiences that were kind of part of our vision decades earlier. So, um, 26, I'm holding it right, I think. <laughs> by, by, um, by 2016, they were commercially available. So these two major uh, platforms were available. And uh, as these platforms are now in their second and third uh, generation. So the technology, very, very short period of time has uh, evolved immensely. It's become more affordable as well. Uh, a quick recap of how we got here. So we started in 1995, uh, 25 years ago, and uh, our first ever project was actually in VR. And due to the challenges that I explained in the previous slide, we bailed on it, kind of that for 20 years. And um, fast forward 20 years later to 2015, when we jumped in with both feet and um, decided that we were going to establish a division in our company to focus on virtual reality and augmented reality experiences. Um, within a year after that, we had our first project. It was in collaboration with um, uh, Parks Canada Historic Site. And uh, since then, we've done a number of projects all in that area, um, in particular uh, museums, historic sites, cultural centers, and sort of kind of building a bit of a niche uh, expertise in developing immersive experiences uh, for those markets. This is our studio. We've been there for about 15 years. We're on the top floor of the old Kroll's department store. Um, been there since 2004. It's not working. There we go. So uh, we've also uh, expanded our uh, facility to include a motion capture studio. Uh, we did motion capture about 20 years ago, and um, motion capture technology is um, is it, it provides producers the ability to capture human performances. So you get a human performer, they strap on this fancy suit, and then we can track their motion or their physical performance in three dimensions. And then we can save those performances and then apply those to digital characters in the virtual environments that we're creating. So we can actually translate uh, human performances. Uh, it works really, really well. Uh, way better than the version that we had 20 years earlier. Um, it costs way less. So uh, this is uh, this next few slides are just a few examples of some of the projects that we've been working on. Um, this one is the first kind of officially released project that we did in 2017. It um, it's located at the uh, Alexander Graham Bell National Historic Site in Bedeck. We did uh, the project in collaboration with uh, the Graham Bell Museum Association, and what it is, uh, it's a VR experience that allows you to get behind the wheel of the HD4, which is experimental hydrofoil. Uh, it was really fast and dangerous and broke the world marine speed record in 1919. So you get a chance to get behind the wheel of this thing, take it around, you know, blast it around on the um, on Bedeck Bay, and then the whole experience ends in a uh, race, a head-to-head -head race with um, Casey Baldwin in the other prototype in, a, in an effort to, uh, to beat his uh, speed record.
uh, this project we did with um, the uh, Old Sydney Society. It is a tribute to 100 years, years of steel making in Sydney. It's called the Open Hearth Furnace, which provides visitors the opportunity to um, get up close and personal with the Open Hearth Furnace and uh, witness the steel making process uh, in a way that hasn't been seen in about 80 years and really up close, like really, really uh, visceral sort of an experience. This project we worked on with um, Eastern Nova Scotia Marine Stewardship Society. Um, it is a recreation of a section of a marine protected area off St. Anne's Bank. These areas are um, now been designated as protected areas. They're very large and they're off the coast of uh, the, off the Atlantic coast. Um, so what we did was we recreated a section that had been surveyed and um, created an experience where you could actually visit that. Uh, area in a miniature submarine and uh, your own personal miniature submarine you can kind of uh, wander around there and encounter some of the geography, the sea life, the plant life and learn a little bit about what's going on and what everybody's working so hard to protect. Um, this project, we, uh, this is our most recent project that we, um, that we launched at the Fortress of Lewisburg National Historic Site in uh, collaboration with their association and Parks Canada. Uh, this is a really cool project. You get a chance to play the role of a French messenger who uh, receives uh, an important message from Mi'kmaq scouts, which is uh, that English spies have been seen in the area, and you have to get this message uh, to the gate before they close for the night. So you have to navigate through the harbor uh, solve some puzzles and engage in some uh, questionable activities to make your way there. Um, but uh, this project launched in uh, July of last year and um, has been very, very well. This uh, last project I can't talk too much about. It's a project we're currently working on with a uh, community of Member 2 and Member 2 Heritage Park. Um, it involves a uh, travel back in time to pre-contact Mi'kmaq territory, uh, fully immersive experience uh, that we'll be launching this year. And there, now, now I'm done. <laughs> Thank you. The 10 is produced by Navigate Startup House. <laughs>